this is something that I know you've talked about in your book before, and I've heard people talk about. In fact, I think uh, Joe Rogan was the first guy that told me about this, and he talked about it, and I was like, you might just see my face on camera. I'm like, what? This blood flow restriction. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? You know, are there benefits, drawbacks uh, to it? Like what? Yeah, so uh, again, another topic that I've carried out quite a few studies on. Um, so it, we talked about light load training. Blood flow restriction training uses a cuff, uh, and it's used proximally in the muscle, meaning the upper portion of the muscle that you're looking to train. Uh, the caveat is, number one, you can only use it on your arms and legs. You can't train with your, really your chest, your back, or your shoulders, because you're and we can do it proximal. But let's take your biceps, for instance. You would cuff up by the deltoid. The deltoid muscle is your shoulder muscle. And you'd put a, place a cuff here, and then you'd do, let's say, bicep curls. And you could do tricep press downs, the same thing. It would be the cuff in the same place. With the legs, you would cuff at the groin area, you know, at the upper thigh, very upper region of the thigh, and do, let's say, leg extensions or squats. And you do, generally, you do this with very light loads. They've tried it with heavier loads, but it doesn't seem to work as well. That it's, even very light loads, 20 to 30 percent 1RM. But when you're using the these very light loads, you fatigue much more quickly than if you just did the light load without the cuff. So let's say if you're using 30 percent 1RM, your first set you might get 25 reps and your second set you're down to 20 and then 15. And usually the rest intervals are rather short between them. Good evidence that it promotes um, similar uh, muscle development to doing traditional resistance training, or regardless of the rep range. Strength is similar to uh, uh, light load training without um, blood flow restriction. Your strength is not going to be, it's as good for hypertrophy, but strength is somewhat compromised, which is always going to happen. Your heavier loads are going to be better for strength. It's just the way it is. But you still will get... I, you doesn't mean this is, again has been taken. It's not binary. It's not strength, no strength. You just don't get quite as much strength. But you can substantially improve your strength as well, even in uh, well-trained subjects. Um, now the thing is, is it better than light load training? Well, you can light load training. I, I should have mentioned this. It is, and you've done it. You say. It's not fun uh, for a lot of people because you just get metabolic acidosis. Again, you have to train hard and you get this burn. And when you're doing it over 30 repetitions, let's say, and it's a three-second rep, that's a 90-second set. Well, it's, you know, 80, 90, 70, 80, 90 seconds. It's a long period of time where you're experiencing that burn, quote-unquote. Whereas if you're doing a leg, let's say, a leg extension or a biceps curl with blood flow restriction, you're cutting the time. You're still using the lighter loads meaning that you're not putting as much joint, uh, joint stress on, but uh, you're cutting the time of that set and thus some, somewhat reducing the discomfort. Is it necessarily better from a result standpoint than lighter load training? There's been no evidence that we've had and certainly that I've seen on that. But there is some hypotheticals. Uh, I, can, I can make cases uh, for a certain, like the hypoxia-inducible uh, hypoxia factor. Uh, is a substance that is thought to uh, uh, increase the uh, hypertrophic response, interesting uh, hypertrophic response. So there are, there are some logical rationales, but we don't have any longitudinal evidence showing it's better. And like I said, the limitation to it is the uh, inability to do it. It's only um, specific to the uh, extremities. There are some potential... Um, I want to at least bring up the fact, in general, it's shown to be safe, but uh, in blood people that have blood pressure issues, I'm not completely convinced there might not be uh, potential issues. And, and the other thing that I want to point out, too, is that the research we have is in very controlled environments with researchers that know what they're doing. You get people, they just like put a cuff on and their arm starts turning purple. Uh, where you can really do some damage if you're not doing this properly. So you have to be cognizant of how to go about doing it if you're going to employ BFR. That was I was going to ask you about that. Like, what kind of cuff are we talking about here? Like, when you're because I always think of a tourniquet with blood pressure, and where it's like. Well, so the in research settings, there are actually blood pressure type cuffs that are used that we can monitor the pressure that's going on. People just use like um, bandana ties that, and they use a rating scale, like a discomfort scale of one to 10 and saying you should be at a six or a seven. But a lot of times people don't 
gauge their one to you know one to ten well, and they can be they're saying they're a seven and their arms turning purple. So uh, you got to be careful.